In this video, we're going to look at expanding single brackets. I'm going to start off by drawing a rectangle. So if I draw a rectangle and I put some side lengths on here and said that this one was going to be 4 and this one was going to be 5, we could look at finding the area of a rectangle. We know that the area is the length multiplied by the width. So what we'd say is 4 lots of 5. Instead of a multiplication sign here, I'm just using brackets. Exactly the same. 4 brackets 5 is 4 multiplied by 5. That's going to give us 20, and that would be units squared. So if it was centimetres, it would be centimetres squared. If it was metres, it would be metres squared. What I'm now going to do is draw the rectangle again, but this time I'm going to split it up. So if I have my rectangle, it's an identical rectangle, and I split this up, I could put a line just here or just here. Let's put it just here. So what I'm going to say now is that this length here, again, is going to be 4. But this one is going to be 3 and this one is going to be 2. 3 and 2 make 5 as before. So our area would be equal to 4 multiplied now by the 3 plus 2. So 3 plus 2. If we think about this now, we're going to get exactly the same answer. What I'm going to do, though, is multiply the 4 by the 3. Then I'm going to add to that 4 multiplied by 2. So what I'm doing here is multiplying everything on the outside by everything on the inside. So 4 times by 3 is going to give me 12. 4 times by 2 is going to give me 8. 12 plus 8, of course, gives me 20. What I'm now going to do is draw a different rectangle. This rectangle, we're not going to know one of the side lengths. We're going to express that in terms of x. So what I'm going to have here is something that looks like that. So we'll say 4 again at the top, and I'll write 4 just here. And what I'm going to do is split this side length up into 2. So if I just put that one there, what I'm going to say now is that this length is going to be x. It's an unknown. This one right here is going to be 6. So if I wanted the area of this particular rectangle, we know that we've got 4. But this time we have an unknown. x is an unknown. And we can put that this side length right here is x plus 6. What I'm going to do here is expand the brackets. I'm going to use exactly the same technique here, but instead of a number, we've got now an unknown. That's a letter. So I'm going to do 4 times by x, and I'm going to add to that 4 times by 6. Now, if we had a minus here, we would simply subtract it. So this is going to give me 4x, and then we got 4 times by 6, which is 24, and we add it. So we can write an expression for the area as 4x plus 24. This is what we call the factored form, and this is the expanded form. In another video, we will look at taking the expanded form and factoring it, so putting it back into a set of brackets. So that's all we would do. So let's say I had an area now, and the area was a rectangle again, and it was 5 multiplied by a side length of p minus 3. We could write that this area was going to be 5p minus 15. All I've done here is 5 multiplied by p, which is 5p, 5 multiplied by 3, and then, of course, I've subtracted it as we've got now this minus sign here. So that is expanding single brackets. It's just another topic from algebra and a basic skill we can learn. So let's go ahead and do some of these. So this one right here, we've got 2, and then we have the quantity x plus 1. So all I'm going to do is 2 times x, and then 2 times 1, and we can go ahead and add those. 2 times by x is 2x. 2 times by 1 is 2, and we would add that. I think it's important to stress at this point that 2 times by x is 2x and not x squared. x multiplied by x is x squared, and we need to avoid that error. 
If we look at the next one, we have the same values here, but we have now the minus. Well, 2 times by x is 2x, and 2 times by 1 is 2, but instead of adding it here, we're going to subtract it, and that is the difference between them. A common error that's made here is that students write that this is going to be 2x plus 1. They don't multiply the 2 by the 1, or in this case, the 2 by the 1. That is not correct. Okay, let's look at this one. I can simply write this out. This is going to be 2x plus 4. I've done 2 times x, 2 times 2, and added them together. This one, again, is going to be 2x plus 6. This one here, we've got two lots of 4x plus 3. Now, we're going to multiply 2 by 4x. Well, 2 times by 4 is 8. Multiplied by x gives me 8x. So all I've done is multiply the first term here outside the brackets by the first term in the brackets, and that's given me 8x. Again, a common error here is when students write that it's plus 3. It quite clearly isn't, because we're going to do 2 times by 3, which is going to give me 6. So it's 8x plus 6. Let's look at the next one. We've got 3 brackets x plus 3. So we're multiplying everything on the outside by the inside. So that is going to give me 3 times by x, which is 3x. 3 times by 3 is 9, and I simply need to add that on. If we look at the next one, we're going to have 3, and then we'll have x minus 4. Well, that's going to give me 3x. 3 times by 4 is 12. We need to subtract it, so that will be minus 12. And that is an expanded expression. An expression is just a collection of terms. Okay, now we need to be careful here. What we've got is negative 3 multiplied by the quantity x minus 4. If we just go back to a bit of revision on the multiplication and division of negative numbers, if the signs are the same, the answer is positive. So if we have a positive multiplied or divided by a positive, the answer is positive. Negative multiplied by a negative is also positive. So when we multiply two negative numbers, we get a positive. If we did a positive multiplied by a negative, we would have a negative. If we had a negative multiplied by a positive, we would also have a negative. So if the signs are different, your answer is going to be negative. So if we look at this one, we've got negative 3 multiplied by x minus 4. So let's go ahead and do that one. So negative 3, then we've got x minus 4. Now, 3 times by x is going to be 3x. We've got one negative and one positive. The fact that that doesn't have a sign means that it's positive. Therefore, I'm going to write that this is going to be negative 3x. 3 times by 4 is 12, so we're definitely going to have the number 12. Negative 3 multiplied by negative 4 is going to give me a positive. So all we have is negative 3x plus 12, or, if you wanted, you could write this as 12 minus 3x. Either way around is perfectly fine. Okay, let's look at the next one. We've got negative 3, then we have 4 minus x. Well, I know now that 3 times by 4 is 12. This time, though, we have a negative and a positive, so that's going to be negative 12. 3 multiplied by x is going to give me 3x. We have one negative here, another negative there. Two negatives multiplied to give a positive. So I'm going to add those terms. So negative 12 plus 3x. Okay, let's move on. This one just here. We should be able to go through this fairly quickly. 4 multiplied by the quantity 2x minus 1. 4 lots of 2x is 8x. 4 lots of 1 is 4, so we subtract it away. This one just here, 4 lots of 2x, or that's 8x. 4 lots of 3 is 12, we subtract that away. This one just here, we've got 9 lots of 3x plus 7. Well, 9 times by 3 is 27, so we'll have 27x. 9 times by 7 is 63, and we need to add that on. So we get 27x plus 
63. This one just here, we've got 12 lots of 5x. 12 times by 5 is 60, multiplied by x is 60x. 12 times by 4 is going to give us 48, and we need to subtract that, so that's going to give us minus 48. Okay, let's look at the next one. We've got here negative 6 multiplied by the quantity negative 5x plus y. So things are getting slightly harder here. 6 times by 5 is 30, times by x is going to give us 30x. If we just consider here, we've got a negative multiplied by a negative, so our answer is going to be positive. At this stage, I don't have to put plus 30x, I can just simply leave it as 30x. 6 times by y is going to be 6y. We've got a negative and a positive. A negative multiplied by a positive is negative, so we end up with minus 6y. 30x minus 6y. Okay, let's move on and look at these ones. This time we have x multiplied by x plus 1. Let's go back to the point. x multiplied by x is x squared. So, for example, if I had now 3 multiplied by 3, this is 3 squared, which is equal to 9. Often students would want to put here that this is 2x. But if we can imagine writing that 3 multiplied by 3 was 3 squared, which is actually 2 times 3, it's not 6. So x multiplied by x is x squared. x times by 1 is just x, and we would add it. So we get x squared plus x. Here we're going to get x squared minus x. The only thing that differs is the sign x squared minus x. Okay, let's look at this one. We've got x multiplied by x minus 3. x times by x is going to be x squared. x times by 3 is 3x. It's not x cubed or x to the power 3, it's 3x. We've simply got 3 lots of x. Sometimes students want to write that as x3, it's just 3x. If we had now 2 times 3, that's the same as 3 times 2. So what we're going to have here is minus 3 lots of x. Positive and negative make this minus 3x just here. Okay, let's look at x, 2x minus 3. If we just consider what we've got here, we've got now x times by x. x times by x we know is x squared, and then we're going to multiply that by 2. So that gives 2x squared. If you just want to think about this as a 1, 1 times 2 is 2, x times x is x squared, so this is 2x squared. x times by 3, as we saw before, is 3x, so we simply subtract that away. Right, let's look at this one here. Uh, where are we up to? We're up to this one, aren't we? We've got x, and then we have now 4x plus 5. Again, if you want to think about this as a 1, 1 times 4 is 4, x times x is x squared, so this is going to give me 4x squared. x times by 5 is 5x, so we have plus 5x. All I'm doing here is simply multiplying 5 by the x and adding it on. Let's now go to this one here. So this one, 2x, and then we've got x plus 7. The only real difference here is that the number, or what we call the coefficient, in front of the x is outside the brackets. It really doesn't matter. If you want to think about that as a little 1, 2 times by 1 is 2, x times by x is x squared, so we have 2x squared. 2 times by 7 is 14, and then we've got the x, so it's going to be plus 14x. 7 lots of 2x is 14x. If we look at the next one, this is exactly the same, it's just the other way around. So we're going to get exactly the same answer. 2x, 7 plus x is going to be exactly the same as this one just here. If we think about this, if we were doing now our rectangle from before and we had, for example, 5 
and then we had another side length of 1 plus 4. Well, we know that that's going to give us 5. 5 times by 5 is 25. If we had 5 and then 4 plus 1, it's going to be exactly the same, 5 times by 5, which is 25. So these two here are the same. It's just the way round in the brackets these are written. Right, let's do this one. We've got 2x, and then we have 7 minus x. 2 times by 7 is 14. Multiplied by x is going to give us 14x. We need to be careful here. x times x is x squared. Times by 2 is 2x squared. So let's write this in. Now, we have a negative and a positive. Remember, that's a positive. So we're going to have a negative. A negative multiplied by a positive is a negative. Then finally, we've got now minus out here, or negative. We've got negative 2x, and then we've got 7 minus x. Well, 2 times by 7 is 14. We've got an x, so we're going to have 14x. Negative multiplied by a positive is negative. We've got x times by x, which is x squared, times by 2, which is 2x squared. So I'm going to write 2x squared. Negative multiplied by a negative is positive, so that is our expression. Negative 14x plus 2x squared. So there we go. That's a basic introduction to expanding single brackets. We multiply everything on the outside by the inside and just consider the correct signs. Two negatives multiplied is positive. Two positive multiplied positive. But if the signs are different, the answer is negative.